Well, it's a little loud, but I do seem to get some pretty nice ABS prints. This is my take on a cheap heated enclosure for ABS prints. First things first, I don't want you to try any of this unless you're absolutely positively sure you're comfortable with AC voltages and temperature ranges where plastics can safely operate. AC voltage even at 110 can kill you and some plastics at high temp can be harmful to your health. I don't want anything bad to happen to anyone, especially my YouTube friends. This process will take two videos. This will be the results video and then there'll be another one on how I built it. I like the somewhat impressive results of just the PVC and vinyl enclosure, and for most prints we wouldn't have to continue to improve it. But then I thought, what about large prints? What do we do with those? Well, we're going to need some heat. This enclosure isn't going to withstand much heat, nor maintain it very well. But to keep it the cheap model, we don't want to get involved in a large complicated build. We just want good prints. Enter the super cheap hairdryer heated chamber build. At a high level, this setup uses an OctoPrint server with the enclosure plugin, a solid state relay, a very cheap hair dryer, and a temperature sensor. And of course, the vinyl PVC enclosure we made in another video. I have tested this configuration endlessly and have come up with some results that were somewhat surprising. First off, I didn't know if it was air movement or air temperature that was causing the ABS cooling issues that you'll see. Turns out, for these tests, air movement didn't have much to do with it at all. It was all about air temperature. These tests were done on a Prusa Mark II. All the tests were printed at 350 micron layer heights with 100C heated bed and a 250C extruder temp. All these were printed with very economical Inland brand ABS filament from Micro Center, silver in color. Inland is one of my go-to cheap filament brands. The PEI sheet was clean with isopropyl alcohol before every print. First up, we have our control test. This was printed on the stock printer with no enclosure at all at around 22C ambient room temperature. You can see all the warping caused cracks on the corners. From the bottom, you can see the bed adhesion remained very good, no signs of pulling away. Next, we have the same print with just the enclosure over the printer. I let the enclosure come up to 30C before I started the print. You can see a huge improvement over the control, but you still see some roughness to the finish where the plastic was probably cooling a little faster than it should have. I did notice that the contact with the bed was much less on this print. I'm not sure if it's caused by the heat or by repeating the same print on the same spot on the PEI sheet over and over. This will require another test to figure out. Then we have the first attempt of printing with the hairdryer running on low. This would get the chamber up to 42C for the whole print. The print came out not so good and I really didn't know why. I did have the filament bind once during the print so I thought it was worth another try. Again, the contact with the bed was a little less on this one about the same as the one with just the enclosure. The next iteration I ran the printer with the dryer on high, getting the chamber up to 60C. 60 is probably right on the edge of too hot for this setup. It was hot enough to make the LCD on the printer start doing some strange things. I would definitely not go any higher than this, but check out this print. It's amazingly smooth. Again, the contact with the bed on this highest print temperature was even less. Because the temp was so high at 60C and the dryer had to run on its highest setting generated much more load and heat on the SSR than I wanted to. I decided to give the 42C print another shot. This is the second attempt at 42C. Turned out the second attempt came out almost as good if not identical to the 60C print. Here you can see them side by side. Just the enclosure, the second attempt at 42C, and the attempt at 60C. So there you have it. With this enclosure and about $20 worth of extra parts, you could build your own automated heated chamber for your 3D printer. Notice I say could. Not sure this is the most practical and nothing could be more temporary than this setup. But it did have some pretty impressive results and it was an interesting experiment. Stay tuned for video 2 where I show you how to build this chamber. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below and thanks for watching.